Do you find yourself struggling to overcome sin, struggling with the same thing and getting frustrated, feeling guilty, and maybe even a little bit condemned? Do you relate with the scripture that says, I keep doing the thing I don't want to do? If that's you, I encourage you to follow along. What would you do if I told you that the first step to overcoming sin is renewing your mind and the way you think about sin and your role in overcoming it? The Bible says in Romans 12 too that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. It means that basically the fruit of our lives follows where our mind is and what we're believing and thinking. So if our minds get transformed, then the fruit of our lives will be transformed. So in this video, I want to transform what you think about sin, how you feel you're supposed to overcome sin, and how we actually overcome that. So hi, my name is Sarah. Welcome to the channel. If you're here, I hope that you subscribe, you join the family. We continue following Jesus, growing in our relationship with him and understanding of the word. But here's the million dollar question of the day. How do we live a sinless life? Who is responsible for making that happen in our lives? If you answer you yourself, this is exactly why you struggle. We cannot live a sinless life in our own strength. We are unable. That is the whole point of Jesus coming to the earth because we were not able to live holy and blameless lives. So if that is why we needed a savior, why when we get saved do we believe that now all of a sudden I can live a sinless life in my own strength? It doesn't work that way. If we needed him before salvation, we need him still after we get saved because it's even now as we are walking with him that we are still being saved. I want to read Romans 7, 24. Actually, let's start in Romans 21 to just see what Paul, what he's saying in Romans 7 about the person who says, I'm doing the thing that I don't want to do. This is how they felt. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we see that Paul is describing a person who is struggling with sin. They are unable to live a holy and blameless life because of their sinful nature. And oftentimes Romans 7 is used as something for the Christian to relate to. Like I keep doing the thing that I don't want to do. We're just humans, we're going to sin. And yes, while we might not be perfect, Romans 7 is not supposed to be the picture of a Christian. Why? Because Romans 7 is the picture of somebody who is striving to be holy in their own strength. And Romans 8 shows us the difference. It shows us how we can actually be holy. If we look in Romans 7, I want to read verse 6. It says, But now we have been released from the law, for we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way, not in our own strength, not in our own self-righteousness, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. So why is this so important? Because it's so often that we use our human nature as a clutch to sin. And we think that it's normal just to continue struggling with sin. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have a struggle, but the truth is that as we walk with Jesus, we're naturally going to be sanctified and we're naturally going to be transformed. So the things that once appetized us, the things that we once desired in the world, those things start having a, a bitter taste. We no longer want it, want it because we don't want broken communion with Jesus. We want unbroken fellowship with him. So we won't risk our fellowship with him for a moment of satisfaction to our sin. But in order to overcome that, we need the Holy Spirit. We can't live like it says in Romans 7, according to our own strength, because on our own, we can't overcome sin. At the end of Romans 7, Paul writes, who is going to save me from this miserable way of living? Jesus, Jesus is going to save us. He is the one that overcame sin. 
And if you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus was in identity, he is divine, he is God. But on the earth, he lived as a human. He died as a human. So everything that he did was by the power of the Holy Spirit. It was by the power of the Holy Spirit that he was able to live a sinless life. So if we want to live a sinless life, we have to yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Romans 8, verse 1. It says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So in Romans 7, the person was probably feeling condemned because they were sinning and they couldn't do the right thing even though they wanted to. They felt miserable. But here we're saying that because of Jesus, the story changes. There's a changing of the guard. It's no longer me leading, but because of Jesus, watch this. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So you're no longer slave to sin, but now you are submitted to the Holy Spirit who frees you from the power of sin. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the spirit. Paul is saying there's two ways that you could live. You could either try to live a holy life in your own strength, but you're not going to succeed. You're going to be like the miserable person that keeps saying, I keep doing the things that I don't want to do. But he's saying there is a solution. There's an answer to be found in Jesus. Because he already overcame sin, you can overcome sin. And because he overcame sin through the power of the Holy Spirit, that's how you're going to overcome sin. And this is what's meant to happen. If you read Romans 8, 29, it says, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So he chose us to be like his son. Who was his son? Who is his son? Holy and blameless. So we have to first realize one this is possible. Living and looking like Jesus is possible. It's not a far-fetched, far-off idea. But two, overcoming sin cannot be done in my own strength. I can't do it. It's why I needed a savior. So the solution to overcoming my sin is Jesus. And since he overcame sin, I can overcome sin. And since he overcame sin by the power of the Holy Spirit, then that is the way I'm going to overcome sin, not in my own strength. So what does that mean for us? That means that we have to start getting to know the Holy Spirit. We have to start walking in relationship with the Holy Spirit and yielding to him and learning from him and letting him take the lead. Because when he is in control of us and when we're yielded to our spirit and not to our flesh, we will do the things that please the spirit. And whatever pleases the spirit, pleases the Father. It pleases Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, this is the staple uh, scripture of discipleship. As we behold Jesus, the Holy Spirit will transform us. And so everything is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. If we want to live a life that is sinless, we're asking for a transformed life. Let's just go to the scripture. 2 Corinthians 3.18. Okay, let's start in verse 16. It says, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So first, if I want to live in freedom and not in bondage to sin in my own personal life, the Holy Spirit, God has to be Lord of my life. I have to be willing to submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So if I'm going to submit to Him, I have to start getting to know Him. Verse 18 says, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of God. So when we see Jesus in his glory, we can begin to reflect that. 
And the Lord, who is the Spirit, Holy Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. So how are we transformed? We're transformed when we're looking at Jesus. In what ways do we look at Jesus? I did a whole video on this last week. I'm gonna put it up here. But we look at Jesus by reading our word, by praying, by walking in fellowship with believers. And you know what? As we behold him, the Holy Spirit is transforming us and taking us from glory to glory. So if you desire to live a life that is not in sin, you can, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. And how does the Holy Spirit transform us when we're beholding Jesus? So that means I have to make my life and my priority about knowing Jesus and pursuing him because everything follows that. If I'm going to be one that was chosen and destined to look like him, I have to look at him because we become whatever we behold. So that means my priority is no longer me focusing on, I need to overcome this. Oh, I messed up again. I need to overcome this. When we magnify this thing that we don't want to sin and we don't magnify Jesus in our lives, we're relying on our own strength and in our own strength, we can't accomplish that. But when we put all our energy and our time on just, I just want to know Jesus, it's the knowing him that transforms us and that allows us to live a life transformed because what the Holy Spirit makes everything about Jesus. He's here to reveal Jesus to us. So when our eyes are already focused on him, we're in the prime place for him to start transforming us so that we can go from glory and glory. And like it says in Romans 8, 29, be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. So I just want to encourage you to put your focus on Jesus because what the goal is not behavior modification. It's not changing or forcefully changing your behavior in your own strength. Because if you do it in your own strength, you won't be able to sustain it. But if you look at Jesus, you'll be transformed and the fruit of your life will be completely different because it's the byproduct of knowing him and loving him. Jesus said that my commands are not burdensome, and if you love me, you will keep my commands. So as you get to know him, the more you're going to get to love him. And as you love him, the more holy you're going to want to live. Because the more holy you live, the more of him you can have in your life. And that's going to sustain a life of holiness and a life of purity and a life of obedience. Give yourself to the process of sanctification. Know that when you got saved, you've already been justified. You've already been given a position of holiness. Now the rest of your walk is all about seeing that fruit catch up with your new identity in Christ. So that's why it's so important to renew your mind because what you believe about sin and what you believe about what the purpose of Christianity is, is going to inform the way that you live. The purpose and the goal of discipleship and walking with Jesus is to become like him. And to become like him, you need the Holy Spirit. You can't do it in your own strength and thank God that we don't have to do it in our own strength. This is not something that we initiated nor something that we have to sustain after we get saved. The Holy Spirit walks with us the whole way through. And that's such a great thing. So I want to challenge you to watch the video from last week. If you didn't watch it, I'll put it up here. But put all your energy into behold.